This is the Sony E 30mm f3.5 macro lens. It's the cheapest APS-C e-mount lens available from Sony and it's the second cheapest Sony e-mount lens behind the FE 50mm f1.8 lens with full frame cameras. Is this lens a good budget option for those enthusiasts looking to get into macro photography or what? Breaking the bank and at this price does it deliver those amazing close-up shots that can amaze the viewer? Is this price too good to be true? Does this lens have any drawbacks or flaws? And most importantly, is it worth your hard earned money? Well, stick around and find out because I'm gonna put this lens to the test and show you what it can do. First off, let's talk about the build quality and design of this lens. It's made of plastic, it's very lightweight, and it's easy to carry around, it's compact, and only weighs 138 grams. It's metal mount and aluminum exterior, it does give it a nice feel though. But you do notice that less than premium feel when compared to much heavier built lenses like this Sigma 16 or this newer 35mm lens, which despite not being as long as a Sony, weighs almost 40 grams more, and that's all thanks to its metal body. The only one of my lenses that is actually lighter than this lens is the 16 to 50mm kit lens. Despite it feeling a bit cheap compared to some of the more expensive lenses out there, that being said, because it's a Sony lens, it's still a solid lens that feels like it can take a bit of wear and tear. Unfortunately, this lens is only available in this silver color. I do prefer lenses that match the aesthetic and color of the camera. So when I do, I put it on either one of my two cameras, the ZV-10 or the A5000. It doesn't look as good as my other lenses, which complete the all black setup. The lens has an electronic focus ring, which is smooth and responsive, but it only works when the camera is set to that manual focus mode. So if you're not in manual focus, then the ring is totally redundant. The lens has a simple optical design of seven elements in six groups with one ED element and three aspherical elements to reduce aberrations and distortions. It has a maximum aperture of f3.5 which stops all the way down to f22. This lens is designed for APS-C cameras like the Sony A5000 here and the Sony ZV-10 which I'm commonly recording in this video on. And remember, because of that crop factor you get with APS-C cameras, you won't be getting the advertised 30 millimeters, but an equivalent focal length of 45 millimeters instead, which is still going to be wider than that normal 55 millimeter lens length. With dedicated macro lenses, one of the important features is knowing what the magnification ratio is. With this, you're getting a one-to-one -one magnification which means that you can capture life-size images of your tiny subjects and still get those amazing details. Another important feature in a macro lens is its minimum focus distance. On this lens, it's 9.5 centimeters. I'll discuss this distance and more later on as to why the minimum focus distance has its advantages and disadvantages. The accessories that you do get in the box are a very small lens hood, which doesn't add too much bulk to the lens and is more like a mask that clips onto the front of the lens. Compared to traditional lens hoods like these, I'm not sure how much protection from stray light you're going to get with this on, but it will certainly protect the front of your lens from surface damage. If you like to attach filters to your lens, then the thread supports 49mm filters. While some of you may be used to macro lenses looking like this, a power zoom lens that allows you to be further away from your subject and then zoom in and out to get the optimum position for you to snap that shot. This lens is a prime lens, so it's going to be finely tuned and optimized for that one specific focal length, 33 millimeters or 45 millimeter equivalent in the case of APS-C cameras, which will allow it to produce sharper images and have more of a simpler design compared to those zoom lenses like these. The main feature of this lens is its macro capability. The lens can focus as close as 9.5 centimeters and that's from the sensor plane, not the lens itself, which means that you can get very close to your subject and fill the frame with those details. However, this also means that you're gonna have a very short working distance, which can be challenging for some macro situations. For example, if you wanna take shots of insects or flowers, you might scare them away or block your own light source from getting too close to them. You might also have some difficulty composing your shots or holding the camera steady at such close distances. So you might want to use a tripod or a flash to get better results. The autofocus performance of this lens is fast and silent, especially in and out of the macro range. But as you know with Sony lenses, the autofocus speed is generally always good. But if you're like me and doing a lot of macro, then with this lens, I do often find that I'm only using the manual focus mode, whether that's doing my single shots or taking focus stacked images. The lens also has no optical stabilization, so you might want to use a higher shutter speed, a tripod, or a camera with in-body stabilization to avoid that camera shake when you are taking your macro shots. Or you could just 
hold your breath and hope for the best. Now let's talk about image quality. The lens is sharp and produces great images, with them being excellent in the center of the frame. Sharpness at f3.5 is already very good and improves further as you go down to f8 where it reaches its peak performance. The edges of the frame are not as sharp as the center, but they do still produce a decent enough photo for most purposes. Now, it's not the best in low light. Its f3.5 aperture will be fine in conjunction with a flash, a bright natural light, or for some macro shots. The lens also has good color contrast and color rendition, making your images look vivid and natural. The colors are vibrant and the contrast is good. The bokeh quality of this lens is good, but not exceptional. But with an f-stop of f3.5, you're going to be limited. And if we compare an image from this lens and two lenses that both have f-stops under two, you can see the difference. But despite this, the lens's seven blade diaphragm will still create those smooth out of focus areas when shooting at wide apertures or close distances. Let's go and see some of the shots I managed to get with this macro lens. Overall, I think this Sony E 33mm f3.5 macro lens is a great option for anyone at that enthusiast level who wants to explore macro photography without breaking the bank, who may just be upgrading from other more budget options like magnification lenses like these that screw onto existing lenses that artificially bring the macro possibility to those lenses that have much further minimum focus distances. It is a sharp, compact and affordable lens that can capture stunning details of small subjects with its one-to-one -one magnification. And it also doubles as a normal prime lens that can be used to shoot for everyday shooting or portraits. However, it does have some limitations that you need to be aware of, such as its lack of stabilization, bokeh quality and its short working distance, which could be the difference between you getting the shot scaring away your subject or even causing a shadow from your flash but with the lens capable of doing macro photography if you want better specs then you will have to spend more money so does the budget price of this lens mean that you have to sacrifice quality i don't think so while it may not be as sturdy as some of the more expensive lenses out there it still produces great images and has some great macro capabilities so if you're looking for a budget option for a macro photography then this lens is definitely worth considering thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content just like this and i'll see you in the next one